Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We'll start in a couple of minutes. So hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining Amphenol and Mauser for today's webinar, Industry 4 and the Next Generation of Interconnects. Uh, my name is Mark Patrick. I'm Technical Marketing Manager for Mauser Electronics in EMEA. And joining me is Peter Swift, Product Marketing Director of Amphenol Communication Solutions. For those who might not know Mauser, we're a global distributor of the newest semiconductors, passives and connectors from over 1,100 manufacturers. We stock the full suite of Amphenol uh, and 41 of uh, its divisions, a uh, full suite of Amphenol product that is, and, um, and that gives us over 49,000 products currently available. Just a couple of housekeeping items to mention for the webinar. Um, please ask any questions you may have on the presentation um, throughout using the Q&A buttons uh, that you'll find at the bottom of the screen. And we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation. Um, if you have any technical questions around the audio or webinar functions, please use the chat function and someone from the Mauser team will help you as soon as we can. And with that, uh, let me hand over to you, Peter. Thank you very much, Mark. And just let me say thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to be here and participate in this with you. Thanks so much for that. So I'll launch right into it. I'd like to start by setting the stage to help to understand what is driving the industrial market. Development in the factory and process automation segments is being influenced by a number of trends and specific needs related to increasing demand, quality, lead time, and cost reduction of products. These drive the need for more automation, real-time process control, zero defect manufacturing, and efficiency improvements with the goals of being faster, better, and less expensive. The Industrial Internet of Things is a natural extension of IoT, enabling factory equipment and systems to interact with each other and the outside world of suppliers, customers, and logistics. Also known as Industry 4.0, this is the next industrial revolution. Communication between devices is becoming more complex and sophisticated, and as independent subsystems and networks have developed within the manufacturing hierarchy, this has resulted in many different communication interfaces and protocols. However, as data volume increases, this becomes a bottleneck as these various networks need to be able to talk to each other efficiently and accurately. A single communication protocol solves a lot of problems. Increasing data volume requires faster data rates and devices and control systems. 
Systems need to be able to scale as the number of interconnected devices grows so that the limits of any one network don't impact the overall system. Growth in the number of devices requires more connections and with shrinking equipment size, port density has to increase. So compact interconnect systems are needed. Manufacturing plants can be harsh environments with lots of moving machinery, environmental factors like temperature, humidity, moisture, and physical vibration and shock. Ruggedized interconnects are needed to function reliably in such environments. The rapid growth in the number of sensors and other devices means that efficient power delivery is critical. Powering such devices over data lines using power over ethernet will reduce the need for power, separate power supplies. Increasing speeds and complexity drive the need for more data analysis to adjust system parameters and the ability to identify and predict issues in real time. And because there are a lot of existing manufacturing plants that will need to adopt and adapt new systems into their existing ones, it is essential for new equipment and protocols to talk to old heritage equipment. There are a number of different types of ethernet based on operating speed and the type of media being used, but all versions of ethernet are compatible with each other. Ethernet is being used across a wide spectrum of industries and it's being rapidly adopted as the protocol of choice in industrial automation as well. Invented in 1973, the first published ethernet standard in 1980 provided 10 megabit performance. Subsequent standards covered bandwidth growth to 100 megabit, 1 gigabit, 10 gigabit, and 40 to 100 gigabit ethernet. The evolution for 200 gigabit ethernet and 400 gigabit ethernet is unfolding now. The industrial automation and building automation space operates at the lower end of the spectrum, up to 10 gigabit ethernet, and the ethernet adoption in this market has been relatively slow, mainly because automation processes and equipment themselves have not been particularly demanding in terms of data rate. However, Industry 4.0 is changing this, and the rapid and widespread adoption of industrial ethernet standards is enabling the development of a whole new class of smart devices, equipment, and systems. The development of manufacturing technology has taken place over thousands of years, with rapid expansion in just the last few hundred years through advancements in machines, materials, and power, followed by computers and the internet. This has greatly enabled degrees of automated manufacturing and the standards that we see in use today. The explosion in manufacturing technology has created a huge variety of different industrial electrical connection interfaces, including power connectors and cables to multi-contact signal connectors. One connector type that has been widely adopted for data signal transmission is the modular jack or RJ45. First developed in the 1970s, specifically for telephone applications, RJ45 has expanded across many different applications, including for industrial equipment. Although RJ45s have been pushed to extended performance capabilities to support network connections, they present limitations, including their physical size, form factor, and mechanical attributes, such as their single point plastic plug latches. We have reached the point where RJ45 connectors can no longer do the job for all next generation applications. So new solutions are needed. It's helpful to understand how data communications within a manufacturing facility works to see how interconnect technology is used and why it needs to evolve. A typical automated manufacturing facility today has a number of functional layers from the enterprise level at the top where business planning, logistics, and all other administrative functions take place right down to the factory floor at the individual component level, which includes sensors, actuators, motors, and other devices that actually do the work. In between these layers are increasing levels of device control, system and process control, and operations management. In the typical organization, Ethernet is already established as the protocol in the top levels. However, as we get down into process control, device and sensor levels, there are some distinct communication systems that have evolved, including various field bus protocols, and these don't necessarily talk to each other. While equipment on one fun level functions using one protocol, they are typically locked out of communication with the next layer above or below without going through a protocol conversion process using devices called gateways. This results in additional equipment cost and can slow down data communication speed, as well as limit the scalability of a function 
uh, of a facility and the ability to easily expand. With the transition to full internet Sorry, with the transition to full ethernet connected factories, the limitations of traditional models are removed. Because there is a single network operating with a single protocol using common interfaces, there are some key advantages. There is no protocol conversion required between layers, eliminating the need for expensive gateway equipment, reducing overall cost. This also reduces the data lag associated with the conversion process enabling real-time data processing, expanding the scalability of the plant and allowing devices to be added as needed. Every connected device is, every connected device is addressed using ethernet protocol, enabling communication from all levels. Another advantage is that factories can be developed with a digital twin or fully simulated process that mirrors the actual processes and uses data collected in real time to analyze and compare the actual performance against the designed process. The actual process can also be monitored, adjusted, and matched to the simulation, as well as adjusting the simulation to accommodate the real world environment and the uh, equipment performance. Once this is fine tuned, the digital twin can be used to both diagnose and predict issues minimizing downtime and optimizing process flow. So to summarize, the hierarchical model uses independent communication systems at different levels, while the ethernet model creates a single network in which all devices have an IP address with all the enhanced functionality that that enables. So to bring it back to an ethernet, uh, to an interconnect perspective and how this fits into the industrial ethernet model, I'd like to talk about some of the newest interfaces that have been developed for these applications. As I mentioned, RJ45s have been adapted very successfully into the industrial space. They're very firmly entrenched and will continue to be for years to come. However, with their inherent limitations and the growing needs for reduced space and increased levels of performance, there are newer interfaces addressing these limitations and offering significant advantages. The IX industrial and single pair ethernet standards have been developed with industrial connectivity as their primary design criteria. These products are taking their place in the new ethernet based manufacturing model. And while a large variety of existing industrial inter interconnects will continue to be used to some extent, the new data driven industrial ethernet automation model will benefit from the use of IX industrial and single pair ethernet. These two interfaces offer a number of key advantages and features. From their smaller form factor, ruggedized design, data performance, and signal integrity capabilities, support for powering devices over the data line, and key factors like being standards-based and availability in IP20 and IP6X configurations, it makes them ideal for industrial applications. Size plays a very important role in industrial applications. When compared to the standard RJ45 connector, it's easy to see the size advantage of both IX and SPE. IX and SPE are about 75% smaller than the typical RJ in total space, volume, and footprint, enabling much higher port density. The IP20 IX industrial can be placed on a 10 millimeter pitch, half of what can be done with an RJ, meaning you can double the number of ports in a, in a typical multi-port application, such as an ethernet switch. From a cabling perspective, single pair ethernet has only two contacts or a single pair or two wire cable. Whereas IX is designed to accommodate four pairs for high bandwidth ethernet. Because SPE uses only two wires, the cabling is smaller and lighter and more flexible and it costs less. So it's easier and less expensive to run more cables to a lot of devices. IX industrial supports four pair or eight wire ethernet enabling greater bandwidth and the IX connectors actually have 10 contacts. So there are an additional two wires for power or other types of signals. Signal integrity is also crucial in industrial designs. This essentially means that maintaining accuracy of the transmitted information when it is received at the other end, is crucial in any high-speed data network to ensure that it operates properly. Both SPE and IX exceed defined signal integrity performance standards for insertion loss and return loss. 
Single pair ethernet provides cat 5e or one gigabit performance up to 40 meters and 10 base T or 10 megabit performance up to one kilometer. While IX provides cat, provides cat 6a or 10 gigabit performance up to 100 meters. This makes IX perfect for high bandwidth, high speed data communication between levels in the manufacturing structure, while SPE is optimized to provide the necessary bandwidth and performance for individual devices, such as sensors over a long distance, supporting real-time air-free performance in the network. Both SPE and IX can provide power to individual devices, eliminating the need for additional external power delivery. For single pair ethernet, this is referred to as power over data link or Poodle, and IEEE standard 802.3 CG specifies the delivery of 50 watts of power over cable length up to 150 meters length and 1.2 watts up to one kilometer. IX Industrial is governed by the highest level of the standard, IEEE 802.3 BT or PoE++, specifying up to 100 watts of power using all four pairs over 40 meters of cabling. However, both SPE and IX Industrial have current ratings allowing them to exceed the maximum specified levels, meaning they're capable of even higher levels of power handling beyond the current 802.3 standards. The standardized mechanical interfaces and performance specs provide plug and play capability, simplifying servicing and addition of new devices in the network. Both single pair ethernet and IX Industrial are governed by established IEC standards. Amphenol's products are fully interchangeable and can mate and function with products from other authorized manufacturers meeting the same standards. This ensures security of supply with multiple sourcing and reliable performance in contrast to some other interfaces that are not as rigorously controlled or may not be standard interfaces. In order to provide optimal performance in an electrically noisy environment like a manufacturing plant, it is critical to make sure that sensitive data lines are properly shielded from radiated electromagnetic emissions. Both SPE and IX connectors feature fully 360 degree shielded designs, providing a completely protected connection throughout the mated interface. And the contact design of the IX with its low normal forces supports high mating cycles for a very durable long life interface. These features ensure superior EMI control, which is so critical to uninterrupted reliable performance. And both SPE and IX, IX feature IP20 fingerproof designs, meaning that the contacts are recessed into the housing so they cannot be touched in the unmated condition, protecting both the burst and handling the connector, as well as the connector itself. The IP20 version is suitable for many applications on the shop floor, as well as in protected environments. But for situations that require a greater degree of protection from dust and fluid incursion, IP6X, which means basically IP65, IP66, and IP67 versions are also, are also available. Reliability is also critical in industrial applications. One extremely important feature of these industrial interfaces is the connector latching mechanism. Reliable latching is critical to ensure the connectors stay properly mated and avoid disrupting the signal. And it's also important that the latching features are rugged enough to withstand potential damage or breakage. The standard RJ45 plug has a simple molded plastic latch, which is known to be weak and easily broken, making it unsuitable for, unsuitable for applications which could see mechanical rough handling. In contrast, both single pair ethernet and IX plugs feature metal latching mechanisms and the IX provides a two point latch rated to 80 Newtons minimum unlatching force, ensuring reliable performance in critical applications. Because you will certainly need different lengths of cable for different applications, it's very important to be able to customize cables in the field when installing equipment as length requirements can vary. So having field installable plugs is valuable. Both the SPE and IX plug kits are available with integrated IDC or insulation displacement contacts, which allow a cut wire to be terminated to the contact without stripping it. The connectors are designed to make it easy to trim and locate the wires properly for the IDC connection with a special tool available to simplify terminating all the wires at once for the IX plug. 
Both IX and SPE also feature integrated cable strain relief mechanisms to make sure that the terminations are protected from undue cable stresses. Amphenol also provides a variety of standard length cable assemblies and can provide customized lengths for specific applications. Cables can be provided with the same connector at each end and also in adapter styles. For instance, RJ, IX to RJ45 to facilitate integration of IX equipped devices into a legacy system. Cables can also be provided in a pigtail configuration with a connector at one end and unterminated at the other, ready for a user to terminate themselves as needed. Another major feature of IX Industrial is the keyed housing and to ensure correct mating in various applications. Currently available with an A key or a B key, a C key is also in the process of being released. While the application of the A, B, and C keys is suggested by the IEC standards for different purposes, the fact, in fact, the connectors are identical from a performance standpoint. So any keying can be used for a full CAT 6A 10 gigabit ethernet application. IP20 versions provide finger protection for safety reasons, which is perfect for controlled office environments, but industrial environments can be full of dust and particulate contamination, as well as fluids, and with, this can be a cause for concern. Both IX and SPE are available in IP6X configurations for applications where protection against dust or particle contamination are required, as well as against water incursion due to submersion or spray. The IX Industrial IP6X connectors feature a rectangular format with a push-pull latching plug housing, which seals and locks to a mating bulkhead mounted on the equipment panel. The equipment itself utilizes a standard IP20 mount receptacle, PCB mount receptacle. Field terminable plugs are available as well as pre-made cable assemblies, just like the IP20 versions. The single pair ethernet IP6X interface uses a circular form factor, the same size as an M12 connector with a push-pull coupling ring to ensure a positive latch to the mating receptacles, which are panel mounted. And all sealing is accomplished using internal O-rings. IP6X cables are also available in multiple configurations. Most ethernet connections require magnetics at the receptacle end to provide correct communication with the PHI chip. These magnetics components, which include transformers and chokes, provide galvanic isolation and DC biasing, as well as common mode cable noise rejection, and are typically mounted to the PCB and used with a standard interface connector. Similar to RJ mag connectors, which are an RJ45 with integrated magnetics, the IX industrial receptacle is now also also provides this option in our new released IX MAG product. This offers a huge advantage with regard to preserving board real estate for other important electronics, as well as providing optimized performance by eliminating PCB traces between the connector and the magnetics components. Amphenol provides the only IX MAG option on the market today with the benefit of maintaining the 10 millimeter center to center pitch between connectors, allowing the same high port density as the standard version. And it also supports PoE++ performance for 100 watts of power and higher to sensors and actuators. This new product is being launched now and will be available in the distribution channel a little bit later this year. So let's take a look at applications for these connectors. If we look inside a typical industrial control cabinet on the factory floor, we'd find devices such as programmable logic controllers, ports, switches, sensor controllers, power supplies, relays, vision system controllers, and other types of equipment, depending on the application. In an Ethernet-based automated control system, all of these devices communicate with each other. And IX and SPE connectors and cables provide both the internal connections and the external I.O to all of the connected devices outside the box. The external devices that would be connected to a control cabinet can include a variety of actuators, which provide physical motion, all types of sensors, controllers for drives, pumps, and more, human machine interfaces, such as displays and control panels, cameras used for vision systems and security, data loggers to provide measurement for various parameters, and robotics, which can take many forms from simple to very sophisticated. 
Many of these devices are self-powered, so no external power source, and they rely on power being delivered through the single pair ethernet and IX data connections using power over data link or PoE. Transmission length and data rate are also important issues to take into consideration. Ethernet protocol is well suited to the different types of devices and equipment being used at various transmission distances, connected using technology like IX industrial and SPE. Sensors and actuators used in factory and process automation environments, as well as in vehicular networks like trains and trams, running at longer transmission distances up to one kilometer, typically use less power and have dedicated functions designed to work well at lower data rates like 10 to 100 megabit per second. Single pair ethernet with its power over data link capability is an ideal connection interface for these applications. As data rate requirements increase and link lengths get shorter, SPE functioning up to one gigabit per second can deliver even more power for devices like industrial PCs, displays and motor drive controllers. Then as data rates increase even further to 10 gigabit per second for more complex and higher power devices such as vision equipment and medical technology, IX Industrial provides the CAT 6A performance needed at power levels up to 100 watts. The path to even higher data rates up to 100 gigabits per second will be enabled by future generation interconnects. So to recap, Amphenol is ideally suited to provide interconnects for industrial ethernet designs. Amphenol is committed to being one of the premier suppliers offering the next generation industrial ethernet interconnect solutions using the most current design, standards, materials, fabrication, assembly testing quality processes. Amphenol has a strong product offering that is expanding to keep up with the rapidly growing industrial ethernet market. You'll see more new interconnect products in this space in the near future. Amphenol has a proven track record of being the first to market with products for evolving industry standards and technologies and is anticipating future needs with more next generation products. And Amphenol provides competitive pricing with shorter lead times, lower MOQs than our largest competitors. Our goal is simple. We want to be easy to, to do business with and provide solutions and services to our customers that enhance their own businesses and help to drive their successes. Thank you. Thanks very much, Peter. Um, I, I think an, an enlightening um, presentation when you think about the, um, you know, the evolution that industrial communications is going on. Um, I've got a few questions that have come in here, but um, mm -hmm. before we get into them, I just wanted to ask about sort of a practical implementation here, because when you look at IX Industrial and you look at SPE, they seem to be at slightly different, um, let's say, places when you think about um, the the length, the, the, the sort of transmission length that SPE is capable of. So it looks like it's more um, lends itself more to, to sensors on a, on the sort of the, the outlying um, areas of an industrial um, installation, perhaps, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and then the IX industrial perhaps carrying a you know higher data rates over a shorter distance. So, is the typical solution a combination of these um, kinds of interfaces? Would you say? Yes, absolutely, and that that's a great question and great point that you raise, Mark. Um, so, as you pointed out, IX industrial is the you know high data rate high bandwidth uh, solution uh, that is essentially replacing RJ45 for ethernet applications where you have you know a big pipe that's transmitting a lot of data you know between you know controllers and devices um, and then you know but it offers all the advantages that I've outlined you know smaller size the high, higher ruggedness that kind of thing single pair ethernet um, is as you said, is really designed to go out to individual devices, components, actuators, where you've got a, you know, a single part that's being controlled by this one dedicated line. Um, as such, a lot of these devices don't really need to function at the much, much higher bandwidths and data rates that the IX industrial does just because of the amount of data that's flowing, because right. it's a dedicated device. The, the you know, you just don't need that that degree of bandwidth. But that, you know, it, it's not that it's not capable of that. At shorter distances, it's capable right. of relatively high speed. The big advantage of single pair Ethernet is that you can connect to devices out on the other side of your factory. It can go up to a kilometer. 
you you pay the price in terms of bandwidth, but because it's using 18 gauge wire, typically you can get uh, more current as well going over it. So you get right. less signal, signal degradation. Yeah. So it, it's actually a, a perfect marriage of devices for a really well integrated uh, ethernet controlled factory. Right, right, very good. Um, a few more questions. So um, I'm gonna get this name I know hopelessly wrong. Cornelio Cayano, I think it should be. Um, a common question considering new wireless technology is why continue to focus on ethernet? And I think really the point here, I guess, is 5G for time sensitive networks, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, they're suggesting, is it, is it for network backbones, possibly? Um, and I, I guess we have to add in, and the, um, the, the question also adds, except where we're trying to, you know, power the, the device and security integrity, you know, might also factor in here. So, but, you know, I guess, um, there's a play for both wireless and uh, wired connectivity in industrial applications. A absolutely, and, and there's certainly a place for it. And you know, where you've got remote devices, that kind of thing, where you, you need that wireless connectivity, it will work hand in glove with, with IX and SPE. Uh, you know, I, I, I look at it as a fully integrated solution. SPE and IX are not the be all and end all answer to all interconnects in, in a factory by any means, of course. Um, but they do have their place and their advantages. And awesome. I think will be used in concert with wireless technologies as well. They do offer the advantage of a hardwired connection, which can provide greater security um, and offers the power delivery that you can't mm -hmm. get over a wireless connection, of course. So it's a great question. And I do agree that um, wireless connectivity a absolutely has a very strong role to play as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, IX and SPE are, are provide, they're filling a gap. And I think that they are going to take over where a lot of wired connections, typically using RJ and maybe M12 and things like that, yeah. um, are not necessarily needed anymore. Yeah. As ever, I think these things depend on the application that they. So, absolutely. Couple, Everyone's going to be more. different. Uh, Falco Builds uh, has asked, do you see also building automation as a market for SPE? Absolutely, yes. And um, there are um, some competing standards in, uh, in SPE. Uh, we, we comply basically with, um, let me see, uh, the IEC standard 63171-6. There are and it, it, it is one of the more robust, rugged versions of the SPE standard. There are versions one, two, three, four, and five as well. And these are supported by other manufacturers and there's different form factors. Some of them are simple plastic uh, connectors that are, have been adopted from fiber optic connections like an SO type, type connector um, to others that are similar to the dash six connector that we're supporting, but with some, some different attributes. Um, building automation definitely will be using uh, SPE and, and the dash six that we uh, offer can certainly be used in that kind of application as well. Um, our real focus is on the industrial automation market, but it can be used in building automation. Some of the other dash numbers are different versions of the standard are focused more on those types of applications like building automation where it is in a more protected environment and it doesn't necessarily need that, that, that you know, rugged capability. Right. Um, but there's a, a wide variety of, of options available for people out in the market. And, and again, I think it's like everything, there's a trade-off, right? Isn't there between application cost and um, Absolutely. The, the need for, you know, ro how, how much of a robust solution is really needed? Yes, yeah, so, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. very good, thanks. And um, I've got another one here from uh, Shri Friskala. Um, again, apologies if I've just um, <laughs> uh, mispronounced that. Are the converters between IX, SPE and RJ45 um, in order to be backward compatible with systems using conventional RJ45? Well, in order to convert between IX industrial and RJ45, all you really need is an adapter cable because they're both running four pair ethernet. Um, sing single pair ethernet is, uh, it's the same protocol, but I believe that there is some conversion that would be required because the, some of the commands are slightly different. I'm definitely not an ethernet 
expert at that level of, of uh, you know, technicality. Um, but um, it, it's a great question. Uh, I, I'm not sure if there is a conversion device required or if it's really more as a, a case of you would be using uh, a controller or something that has both IX and SPE ports on it, in which case that controller is already doing all of that conversion. It's still right. Ethernet. So it, it's not going through a full protocol conversion. It's just going through a funneling type of a, a process, I think, that that device would do. Right, right. Yeah, I think there's um, perhaps, like you say, where, you, where, you've, where you've got a, um, a compatible um, protocol and specification for the physical connections as well is one thing, but there may be a bridge device required in, in certain circumstances. Right. And then, and, and I, I'm sorry, and I was I was just going to say, and that's why you know, from a cable assembly perspective, mm. we, we offer both the having an IX or an SPE at both ends with different types of you know cabling, jacketing, that kind of yeah. thing, of course, but also the adapter cables. We're, we're seeing, we expect that there's probably going to be more demand for those um, initially because people are integrating, you know, devices that uh, will have IX and SPE ports on them into systems that are that are currently using say RJ cabling. Right. So you can have an adapter cable with a IX at one end and an RJ plug at the other, and it'll work in, in that system. Yeah, um, sure. So trying to give customers flexibility, I guess, flex, flexibility of solution for, for this kind of on-site implementation that we can't necessarily know all the details about, right? Absolutely, flexibility is, is yeah. absolutely key and kind of the name of the game. Indeed. Um, a couple of others then. So uh, we, you talked about standards, and um, I just wondered if there's any more information you could help the, the people understand uh, in terms of go, you know the um, the standards that govern these new interfaces. Sure. And we'll get on to interoperability then, I guess, as well. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So as I mentioned, DIX Industrial is is controlled by a, a standard called IEC. 61076-3-124, long string of numbers. But, but the, the advantage is the IEC standard governs the mating interface, the form factor of the plug and the receptacle connectors, uh, all the specific dimensions, and specifically it's for the IP20 version. The electrical, mechanical, and sign signal integrity performance are all specified uh, parameters such as insertion loss, return loss, uh, near and far and crosstalk, propagation delay, all, all the other sort of key performance characteristics are defined in the spec, uh, in the standard. Wiring and pin assignments are for both the free and the fixed connectors with the plugs and, and uh, PCB mount receptacles. They're all specified. Uh, and all test requirements and methodologies are laid out in the standards as well. So our product complies with all of that stuff, um, uh, as do other manufacturers of, of, of these products as well. So they'll be fully intermatable and interchangeable with each other. Um, the, the IX standard does not prescribe at the moment the requirements of the IP67 versions of the connector. So um, you'll see different manufacturers coming out with their own versions of the sealed IX connectors. Um, right. but, but the electrical performance and the actual mating interface, you know, the, the portion of the plug that mates with right. the receptacle yeah. are all still compliant with the dash three dash 124 version of the standard. For single pair ethernet, it's covered by IEC standard 63171-6, which we already talked about a little bit. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, it's, it, it's a little bit more complicated because there are a number of different versions of that right. standard um, and they all have different interfaces. Uh, you know, some are better suited just to different markets and applications uh, uh, than, than others. Um, Amphenol is part of the in, uh, single pair Ethernet industrial partners network. So it's a consortium of suppliers that are supporting that Dash 6 standard and the various different components go along with it. So there's, you know, ourselves, um, some of our, our other big connector manufacturers out there, TE or Rossi, Harding, are are all Molex are all part of that Dash Six uh, consortium, and then there are various different cabling suppliers. Um, you know, uh, everything you can imagine that would be used in that system. There are suppliers of those attributes, those types of components, devices, 
architecture, whatever is required to support it, are all part of that consortium as well. Right. So it's it's you know it's strong. We support each other in and yes, we're you know as far as the other connector manufacturers are concerned, we are competitors, but we're all working towards the same goal of establishing Dash Six as one of the SPE interfaces of right. choice for industrial applications. And I think I'm not if sure you stand, if that answers your question. So. It does. It does. Thanks. Yeah. And I think if you stand in the customer's shoes, that's exactly what they're looking for because it's bringing them confidence that if they adopt this solution, um, you know there are, um, you know, there's product and, and uh, application solutions from from many different uh, points of view. And I think that's a that's um, you know very beneficial to the to the end customer, which is uh, I guess who we're all trying to support. Yeah, absolutely yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's secure source of supply with multiple sur uh, qualified support sources available that's right so, which is really key so there's legacy equipment out there there's there's a couple more questions here that i'll sort of frame in, in i guess in one way um there's legacy equipment out there and um so there's a there's going to be an adoption rate i guess for this mm -hmm. kind of um this sort of new interface technology and um and I guess that adoption rate, you know, there are maybe some obstacles along the way to that. But I wondered, you know, how do you see that rolling out when you um, when you look at that, you know, when you look when you look out from where we are now? Sure. Um, well, I mean, we, we see there being three phases basically to this. There's the first phase is where users will start using IX or SPE devices and need to connect to them in, in sort of isolated applications. So they want to buy a motor drive controller and it's got IX on it and they want to include it into their system. So they'll be sort of spot putting different types of sensors, devices, et cetera, um, that will be using these new interconnects, ethernet protocol still, but you know it will connect to existing systems that happen yep. to be you know wired up with RJ45. The second would be sort of actively migrating existing systems um, to using new interfaces. So you would start seeing them replacing existing equipment um, with newer devices that have, have these new interfaces and capabilities. And then third stage really is full integration. So they've replaced everything. And, and in fact, you know, a new plant is being built and it's wired up this way. So there, there is no adoption required. It, it's really, it's designed like that from the get go. Yeah. Um, but but you mentioned obstacles. So I mean, there there are certainly some that I think everybody has seen over the last couple of years, and and you know one of the big drivers there has been the pandemic, um, and it, basically this has created a lot of delays in the market. Uh, it's caused a lot of equipment manufacturers to put new product development programs on hold. Yep. Uh, but we are starting to see this ease up now. Some of the big you know, customers that we deal with, actually, there's a lot of customers. It's not just the big guys that you think of. Um, they're, they're starting to turn their attention back to this because they've got the resources back. Um, they've got, they're, they're, they're not just trying to keep their business alive. They're trying to grow it and, and get back to where they were pre-pandemic. So we're starting to see the interest build there more now. Uh, another is the uh, supply chain situation globally. So I think we've all experienced um, issues associated with that that were kind of oh, yeah. driven again by the pandemic. And you know everybody talks about chip shortages, but there's all kinds of other shortages. There's been increases in, in commodity prices, metals, resins, yeah. all those kinds of things. And long lead times, because a lot of the suppliers for these things actually suffered greatly because of the pandemic and maybe didn't even survive. And so the supply base for a lot of the materials that go into these components have dried up or yep. greatly reduced their capacity. So all of those kinds of constraints have prevented a lot of end users who would be adopting this technology to have to push out new program development because they right. haven't been able to get and it, you know, they haven't been able to get the other components they need to, to drive and build these systems. Um, and then, you know, from a, a technology perspective, you know, as we already discussed, adoption always takes some time. Um, our approach to that is to be very present with our existing and potential customers, uh, assure that they have our full support, have full access to samples, technical information, uh, and that we're very responsive to their needs. Right. Um, 
as they're looking at these things, we want to be first in line talking to them about it so that, yes, we've got that, let's go. Um, so we're aggressively and proactively promoting these interfaces. We are finding that customers are receptive. Um, uh, we also have to respect that it takes time for some new technologies to find a foothold as well. So we think that as momentum increases, we'll see you know rapid growth of these interfaces over the next one to two years. Right. It's, it's been slower than we had hoped and expected, of course. But for, for the reasons explained, I think, and and we've yeah. seen that across all sectors, I think, whether yes. um, industrial as we're talking about, but yeah, being being you know getting that share of mind, being ever present in the customer's mind. Well, that's exactly what this webinar is uh, is helping with. We hope so. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's it, Peter. I think that's all we've got time for. So uh, okay. thank you again for the for the presentation and the excellent Q and A session at the end. And thanks to everyone for joining. Questions will be answered in writing, also made available to all participants. So um, and also, should you wish to watch the webinar again or share it with others, it will be also be made available to you all on demand. And finally, there should be a short survey coming up. We're grateful if you could provide some feedback to help us improve future webinars. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, Mark. Bye-bye, everybody.